Hey Gene, here's that video you requested. Um, insert up top here, canvas. I usually pick the top orientation that brings us to a bird's eye view. In this case, I'll rotate the canvas uh, in a way that I would, you can easily see it, expand it out. Um, you can move this canvas around at different points. You can flip the canvas. Um, this looks good to me right here. Next step that I in my process that I use, expand the canvas tree down here, the command tree. You'll see the canvas name that you just inserted. Right click, calibrate, pick two points on the canvas and calibrate it to what you want. In this case, I'm going to calibrate to 20. This is where you would um, calibrate your wingspan or your parts or anything like that. It's not really important to uh, that the calibration be accurate to what you're building, but what is important is that if you have a plan with multiple sheets and, and you have to move parts from one sheet to another, you're going to want to calibrate those two sheets to each other or else the parts won't fit together. Um, I'm going to pick one of these that's pretty quick and pretty simple that uses all the commands that I use. So right here, um, I usually start with straight lines and, and, and exterior straight lines. It makes it much easier for me. And then you want to make sure all the points closed. That way your drawing is, there are no open points in it. So I usually start, like I said, start off straight lines, L for line. You can see the line command is on my cursor. My cursor should just change. Click onto the face of the canvas. Now this is going to tell us that we're drawing directly onto the canvas. Now to free up this uh, this current command, you either double click this last point or you click the check mark. Um, now that we're free, we can start drawing on um, another line or we can add change it to different command. In this case, I'm going to change it to different command. I'm going to use spline and start drawing in splines. Um, the trick to drawing in splines is you don't want too many points and you don't want too few points. Too many points, it's going to be really hard to make the adjustments later. Too many points to deal with and too few is not going to allow you to get the curvature that you need. In the beginning, when you're tracing your parts, it, they do not need to be super accurate. Um, and I'll show you why in a second. Um, the main thing is that you get the outline of your part and you give yourself enough uh, in this case, spline points that you can make adjustments to it, uh, accurate adjustments later. So now that I've traced everything, escape to kill all the commands on the mouse. So now my cursor is back to a normal mouse. You can see it. I know this drawing is enclosed because if you hover over it, it highlights. If there was an open point on here where basically um, two points don't meet, where the end points don't meet, it won't highlight like this. So we know that it's a good point. The other thing, the other way to check this is if you click on it, it, it selects, which it does. So here's where you want to make the adjustments to the drawing itself. Um, and this is where you can either move whole lines, move points around to, and, and shape it the way you want it and uh, in accordance with uh, the drawing. So let me just do that really quickly here. You can either do it with the points, you can do it with the line itself. Um, if you're drawing straight, if you're drawing straight lines and, and things like that, um, you could actually do dimensions and then just, you know, click a certain point and then add dimensions and it'll automatically do it. And I think that's really important if you're trying to do like a production level model where the pieces need to fit together exactly, or the CAD itself needs is going to be used in uh, in three D printing or 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 something of G code where you're going to try to produce an accurate model later. Okay, so for the sake of argument, let's say this model looks good, right? So the next thing you want to do is you want to turn 2D drawing into 3D. So we know that this part is good because it highlights and we can select it. So what you want to do is right click, move, I'm, I'm sorry, right click, I'm sorry, I'm way ahead of myself. Click it, Q, which is extrude, and this is what we're going to call 2 millimeters, we'll just say 2 millimeters. 
and now we've turned this part into 3D. So if you go over here and uncheck the canvas boxes to hide the canvas, shift, uh, your scroll button on your mouse, hold it. You can see my cursor is changing to orbit. You can flip it around, and you can see this is now a 3D part. Right. The other way you can do that is you just rotate this box up here, the navigation key on the upper right. So this is where, going back to the top, now I'm going to start the next command. So I just hit top and orient it back, orient myself back to where I was. Um, if I was doing another part on the airplane, then you know, I would bring the canvas back and then start tracing the next part. Right. Um, but for the sake of this example, I'm just going to keep moving forward with the next set of commands that I use. So now that we're at this point and it's in 3D now, we want to be able to move this part around. So I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that you should always be in the design environment, which is right up here in the upper left hand corner. You have different environments. This is the, the design environment. So right click anywhere, move copy, click on, I usually click on the face of uh, whatever part I want to move. Uh, where it says move objects, make sure this says bodies. And now this group of commands comes up right here, two arrows, a square, and this. You know, you can rotate, you can move freely. The arrows are straight line movements, but are, they're on the same plane. The arrow, uh, the square, you can move it on a different plane. Let me show you that. See how it's on a different plane now? So now you're in that 3D space. Um, and I usually pick a face to move because when you're rotating a part, if you pick an edge or you, if you pick a point, it might add um, a different angle that you would have to contend with later. So that's the move command. And this is where I usually just put uh, pieces. I manually fit the pieces um, in just because I like doing that. But you can also do the type of moves you're talking about, like point to point snaps and things like that right here at the move type. You can pick your move type and it'll automatically do it. Um, that's the next that's the move command and then the final command that I use is is the copy command which is like say there are multiple ribs that are the same on the airplane and I just don't want to draw all those ribs out so right click move copy and it's the same thing as the move copy command you're not going to highlight the whole thing make sure this move objects as bodies come down to the bottom and it says create copy just click on create copy once you click on that just move the new copy to the location that you want out of the way hit enter and so now we have two 3d copies right here now if you want to make an adjustment to any of this you can come to this command tree bodies and it records all of this here right so this is where if you're into production you can name the parts individually keep the name integrity of the plans um, I usually don't mess around too much with this just because I like building but if you're trying to build something you know, for production that you want to be able to uh, catalog it and things like that, then you would use a lot more commands in the command tree. Um, and the final command that I use is the kind of like the finishing touches, where I'll change the environment. So upper left hand corner, change the environment to render. Now you're in this space where you can set up, you can change the color, you can change the, the lighting and things like that. You take uh, pictures of the setup and I usually just do a quick appearance right here, which is a color wheel. Come down. What do I want to do this at? Do I want to do this wood? Sure, let's do wood. So once your options come up, you can just drag your options onto your part that you want. So that's a wood one. Let's do one that's paint, glossy, and red for the hell of it. I'm sure Star Wars fans are going to kill me right now because... Uh, this is probably not accurate, but whatever. And there you go. So now you have two parts, you know. This is exactly how I build um, the, the model kit planes. It, obviously, it's just uh, with a lot more parts and a lot more moving parts around. All right, I hope that helps, man. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments or just reach out via email, and I'll see if I can answer them for you.